Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Meetup TV. As always, I'm your host, Ulysses Lua, and I'm here with uh, one of my friends. Uh, I'll let I'll let her introduce herself. Um, I just I feel like I talk too much in my intro, so <laughs> I'll just let her go. So go um, ahead. Hi, I'm Kay Hansen. Um, I am a fighter, and yeah, that's all I do. <laughs> and we also got a special guest today. Rico, which is separation anxiety, so he's uh, <laughs> so he's here. <laughs> right, right. All right, well, like she said, she is a fighter, so we're going to go a little more on that. Um, so kind of further that question, um, tell me or tell us a little mm -hmm. bit about you, what you do, where you're from, where you grew up. Okay. So, um, I'm 21, okay. so I grew up in uh, Nowak, La Mirada area. Okay. I uh, went to school there. Um, I played softball for most of my young life, like 9 to like 16. And then I found fighting and fell in love, and that was it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Dang, that's crazy. Yeah. Okay. So, kind of backtracking on that. Yeah. What got you into the whole MMA boxing? Um, well, I saw Ronda fight, because my family was big on, like, going to UFC watch parties. So, I remember growing up, and, like, we'd go, and we'd watch, like, Tito and Chuck, and, like, GSP <laughs> fight, and I'd be like, this is so stupid, like... Especially with, like, the gimmicks, you know, like, and I was just like, what are we doing here? Like, why are we watching this? And then I saw Ronda fight, and specifically, she fought Betch Kohea, um, and I remember she fought on, it was, like, August 13th, I still remember the date, and I was like, <laughs> I didn't even have to see her fight, like, I just saw her walk out, and I was like, oh, like, okay, like, that's what I need to do. And I was in the gym two weeks later, and I haven't stepped out since. Dang. Yeah. And how old were you when you started? 16. Damn. Yeah. Holy shit. Uh, what was it first? Was it boxing or was it... Well, I started MMA? everything at once. Okay. I knew, like, it was crazy. I remember going in um, to my first class and, like, the coach was like, like, what do you want to do? And I was like, I want to be the UFC champion. Like, so <laughs> I knew I wanted to be the UFC champion before I even, like, stepped foot, you know, in a gym. So, okay. Okay. Started everything at once. <laughs> <laughs> um... Well, so you did say Ronda Rousey was your inspiration, mm -hmm. but was there like a, maybe a male fighter or another fighter? Um, I mean, GSP is one of my favorites to okay. watch. Um, okay. Like I try to model, you know, my style off him. I like how he's just kind of genuinely himself. He doesn't like talk shit or like try to be something he's not, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so GSP for sure would be like my male role model. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. So... You started off, was it boxing first? or uh, it, My or? very first class was Muay Thai, okay. which is like kickboxing, yeah. but I uh, kind of like stuck to wrestling and jujitsu more, or like it stuck to me, I would say, like I liked it a little more, okay. but I did everything, um, and I've boxed professionally, I've competed in jujitsu professionally, like I've dabbled in a little bit of everything just to help my MMA career. Okay, so... Yeah. Obviously, I did some stalking, so to speak. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you started your career in Invicta, right? Invicta, yeah. Invicta, right? Yeah. And now you're in one of the biggest MMA platforms yeah. in the UFC. What, is, what do you think the difference is, if there is a difference when it comes to the fighters or... Yeah, for sure there's a difference. Um, Invicta, I was lucky enough you know, to, to work with them for almost my whole pro career before the UFC. Um, I think I had every pro fight with them except for one. Um, and they are like the perfect platform for women on the up and coming, you know, I feel like it's the perfect organization, um, for developing fighters or women fighters, at least to, to go and to grow and to have like a little bit of a platform. Um, it's also streamed on like UFC fight pass and there's bright lights and there, you know what I mean? So it's yeah, kind of yeah. like, a an introduction to like the UFC, obviously the UFC is on a bigger scale with everything, but I think I was like blessed enough to work with Invicta and kind of be used to everything, you know, by the time I got to the UFC. Because um, Invicta runs it really, really well, like really professionally. So Okay, so obviously you've been fighting for, you're 21. Yeah. You've been fighting for about, I'd say once you hit 18. 18, I went pro. Right? Yeah. So I'm sure you probably get this question. Mm -hmm. How does it feel to be one of the, I think, right, one of the youngest I'm, fighters I am, I'm like the second youngest, I think, in the UFC. So how um, does, how does the, is there pressure? Do you think it's, no, you know, you know the fresh me? Like, how do you? I, I don't know, you know? It's weird because I feel like I'm kind of like a rookie and a vet at the same time, you know? Because 
even though I am 21, I've had a lot of fights and I've been through a lot in my fights, like a lot of ups, a lot of downs. Like I've kind of experienced a little bit of everything, you know, already. Um, but yeah, I am 21, you know, so it's like, it's a weird mix because, um, you know, I am young when it comes to age, but when it comes to experience, uh, I'm not so young. Uh, I do get like a lot of questions like pre-fight, like during interviews about my age. Um, but I don't feel any pressure, you know, I feel like I'm, I'm where I should be. And um, you know, this sport has kind of called my name since the beginning, and this is what I've, like, dreamt of, you know, or at least the beginning of what I've dreamt of, so for me, it just kind of feels like how it should be, you know, it doesn't feel, like, special, it doesn't feel, like, not special, it's just kind of, like, how it should be. You're just going with the flow and yeah, just cherishing the moment. Exactly. I oh, I you. try. I'm, <laughs> I'm too busy thinking about what's next all the time. I'm working on cherishing the moment. <laughs> Um, calling on that, uh, obviously what you said you did, it started with Muay Thai, did, you've done boxing, jiu-jitsu, yeah. but what is your, uh, fighting style? Mm-hmm. Um, um, you know, after my UFC debut, I actually started working with a new striking coach because before that I would say like I was well-rounded for sure. Um, you know, and I had game and I was a lot of, had a lot of heart, but, um, I think I was, you know, like a grappler, you know, I would try to wrestle and get it to the ground. Mm-hmm. And that was like, everyone knew, like, that's what I wanted to do, you know, but I finally feel like I'm at a point, um, you know, I kind of switched gyms and switched my camps up. And, uh, I think last fight kind of showed, um, like the developing my striking. So now I don't know, I'm way more comfortable on the feet now than I've ever have been, you know? So I would say I'm more well-rounded. I think uh, at this point in time, my bread and butter is still my grappling, you know, my wrestling. I just feel like I have a good body build for it, and um, it just kind of comes more natural to me. But I'm getting to the point where, um, you know, everything kind of feels good. So I don't know if stylistically now what I would what I would categorize myself as. Okay. She's just a well-rounded badass. Yeah. That's pretty much what she's saying. That's the plan, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this one's, a, I think, might be a tough question for you. Mm-hmm. to beat me up after this <laughs> so overall pro career yeah you're seven and four correct yep in the ufc you're one and one yep this is of course opinion based i've heard a lot of people heard yeah that your last fight was mm-hmm. questionable yeah you know i'm sure you've gotten this question before oh yeah um you as a your second fight, yeah, you know, like the sophomore fight. What do you think of your uh, of, the, of the decision? Yeah, like, what do you uh, think? I thought, you know, I'm really hard on myself, and I've been in really close fights before, and I'm the first to to man up when I when I lose, even if it's close. And like people are like, you edged it. I'm like, no, like I lost. Like, and I've always been like that. Um, however, this last fight, I will say, uh, I, I do think I won and I do think I got, you know, kind of asked out, but, um, you know, I've talked to a lot of people, including people like that work for the UFC and stuff. And I think everyone kind of is on the same page and like, um, at this point, uh, even though it is a loss, like I performed really well, you know, and a lot of people thought I should have got the nod. So, um, you know, I don't know. Uh, it is a little, you know, it kind of does suck, you know, but at the same time, like I said, I'm where I want to be and I don't think it's in the long run, it's not going to matter. Like that loss of, at this point, I really don't care about my record, you know, obviously the plan is to go in there and, and fight and win, but in the UFC, they throw good names at you and I just want to be known as like a super exciting fighter, you know? Um, of course, of course. So I think if I keep doing what I'm supposed to do, then those wins will come. Um, but I don't think the UFC really saw it as a loss, which is so. good. Yeah. I didn't see it as a loss. <laughs> Thank you. So, again, check out her. There is some fights of hers on YouTube, so make sure you guys do check them out. So you guys can, you know, check it yourselves to see what great fighter she was and she's becoming. I Thank still you. think you're yeah. constantly I'm learning. Yeah, I'm super young and I <laughs> right? have so much to learn, I mean, so. where'd she just come from? <laughs> <laughs> Training, yeah. Exactly. Um but it's the lifestyle. Um, going based on, you know, your upcoming fights and just yeah. fighters. Um, what do you think of the strawweight division? Uh, I think the strawweight division is stacked, you know. Um, 
I think it's the most competitive women division for sure. In and outside of the UFC. Like even outside of the UFC the competition was stiff. So in the UFC it's even like more stiff. Um you know, it's super competitive. Even compared to, like, the men's division, I think out of all the divisions, women's and men, it's one of the, the deepest, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, there's really not one fight that's, like, an easy fight. Um, and, you know, I personally, I kind of like that. You know, I, I like... Because I feel like it's more earned. You know, by the time mm-hmm. you get that belt, like, if you get that belt and you went through the gauntlet of, like, 115-pound division, like, you're a G. Like, you earn that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, oh, it's not like, uh, you know, I don't know. It's It's... It's for sure the most, like, developed women's division, I would say. And I, honestly, it helps because I think most women in general walk around around that weight. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I feel like that's <laughs> why it's so, like, there's so many girls because most girls do walk around. Yeah. around so you're 115, right? Yeah. Is 115. What is yeah. your What is your walking weight? <laughs> uh, like 130 to 135 usually. Dang. Yeah. I mean, so. but as camp goes on, like, uh, I knew about this fight 10 weeks out. You know, mm-hmm. so you just kind of taper it down. You know, like you refine your diet more and more each week. You bump up your cardio more and more. So by the time fight week comes, like it's an easy cut. It's mm-hmm. not like you're not, I wouldn't say easy, but it's it's not like you're going from 135 to 115 in three days. You know what I mean? Like it's, exactly. you try to do it as safe as you can. It's not as uh, bad as it draining sounds. on the body than yeah. a lot of people may think. Yeah. I, I'm thinking, I mean, what? it <laughs> depends. Like uh, every weight cut's different, you know, every wake up your body is different especially me like I'm, tw- I'm a 21 year old girl you know so I'm still growing yeah uh, my hormones are still growing and my muscles are still growing so uh sometimes like I'm walking at 125 sometimes I'm walking at 135 so that cuts different every time you know yeah. so it just That's depends crazy. that is crazy crazy um you did you fight in the flight weight too I have I fought in flight weight a couple of times well, the problem you- is like uh, a lot of these girls walk around at like 155, you know, 145. So, uh, like, I don't know. I've, I know some pretty big flyweights, you know, they're like 5'6". I'm like 5'2", 135 max. So, uh, it's it, I would have to pick and choose my fights probably. Do you, do you think the speaking of that, do you think the, the height weight, the height, the yeah. arm length does play a, a big outcome on the um on the yes and no you know i think it stylistically it depends um for me i've trained with a lot of girls that do fight at 125 who are you know a lot bigger than me and um you know i feel like for me if, if i fought in the 125 to pound division it would be a lot more like grappling i would just try to get in and get it to the ground because when you're on top of someone they're a lot less strong than when they're trying to punch you you know what i mean so um so, I don't know. Yeah, I think it all depends. Uh, the reach would be something I'd be lacking for sure because I'm, like, super <laughs> short. <laughs> so, um, I think I would have to try to get around that. Okay. The, the reach more than the, than the weight, I think. Definitely. Um, obviously, you've been fighting for about five years now. Yeah. What is some uh, great advice you've received, whether it be a coach? Uh, yeah, uh, I've got a lot of advice and you know, sometimes it's advice you want, sometimes it's people's two cents that you're like, all right, cool. But, uh, you know, I don't know. I've got a lot of great advice, but I feel like the best stuff that I've learned is just through my own, like, failures, you know, and, like, um, you know, especially now in, like, fighting, I feel like it's so easy to, like, try to put up this facade, you know, and try to play this show. Um, and you can easily get sucked into it because there's so many fighters, you know, and you're like, how am I going to stand out? How am I going to be different? You know, everyone fights, you know, a lot of people are good now. And, uh, but I feel like something I've like really learned is like to stay true to yourself. Even if it takes longer to get where you need to be, even if it's like, like, don't like, I mean, if you have bad blood with someone and you, you're talking <laughs> shit, that's one thing. But uh, so many people nowadays, they try to force it and they're like, just dicks. And it's like... Don't do that. Like, just be, like, be a cool person. You know what I mean? Uh, And I think, like, that goes a lot farther than, like, selling yourself out to, like, get your, get your name out there, you know? So that's something I think I would, like, I've caught on to that I've really learned. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. See where you're coming from? Yeah. Um, going back to, obviously, you have a fight coming up. Yeah. Um, what is your preparation for your fight? Have any times a day how many times a week do you train what's uh, your ooh, give us a little I through your preps a lot um 
I don't know. I'm kind of a busybody in general, so I feel like in a, in and outside of camp, like whether I have a fight coming up or not, I kind of train the same. It's just the intensity behind it, you know. Um, right now, uh, like let's say my Tuesday is my my heaviest day. So Tuesday I'll do ten to eleven a.m. Muay Thai, and then I'll do eleven to twelve MMA sparring, and then I book it to my strength and conditioning class for twelve thirty to two strength and conditioning, and then I go back at night from eight to nine thirty for more Muay Thai. Uh, that's just my Tuesday. Um, every day is just a pretty much same thing, but just a little different. You know, I'll add jujitsu in there, wrestling in there. Um, but it's it's a long day for sure. <laughs> like, uh, especially like when you're adding like uh, you know, I just got a manager, so I have like new sponsors and and he's booking me all kinds of like podcasts and interviews so it's really like i'm cool. trying to hype that fight up and like really cool, play the really social cool. media part and like Definitely. on top of training and then now i'm a dog mom so <laughs> and it's literally really like cool. having a child so right. <laughs> it's a it's a lot but it's good because like i said i'm a busy body like i um i don't i don't know i'm like i always gonna be doing something like i'm trying to work on re- like resting and recovering i get in trouble from my coaches because i, I don't think do i was that. gonna ask how is your <laughs> i don't that's the problem is i don't rest even like say i'm like okay sunday i'll take the day off and then i'm like hey do you want to go to the mountains like let's go to the snow let's go to the beach like i'm always like doing something you know and i'm never just like at home for a whole day like doing nothing i feel like Obviously, we, I follow her on Instagram, but I feel like you're always at the beach. <laughs> I yeah, I try to because it's like relaxing and like okay. like that's like that's my go to when it comes to to trying to relax. You okay. know what I mean? It doesn't work half the time, but I try. I'm <laughs> trying. <laughs> How is your um your eating? What do you like your eating uh, habits? Well, right now it's super strict. Um, okay. I have a nutritionist, and uh, you know as each week goes by depending on like how the number on the scale is we kind of like refine and refine right now it's super basic it's literally like i have like little meals and i have to eat four to five a day um and it's like literally either ground turkey or chicken and then like just a little bit of vegetables um and i'm getting a lot of little meals in a day so i'm, I'm fed but it's very it's kind of bland and it's kind of <laughs> boring i'm not gonna lie but um you know, it is what it is for the next uh, seven to eight weeks. I'm yeah. just going to have to suck it up. And after the fight, I can eat what I want. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, your next fight. Yeah. March 20th with mm-hmm. uh, Cheyenne Buys. Yeah. Right. Uh, how have you been preparing for that? She, is she... Um, she's from... She was in the flyweight. Now she's... No, she's or, always fought at 115. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, but I don't know. I've known about Cheyenne for a while. Um, I feel like she's like a couple years older than me, but we've kind of always been on the same, like up and coming, you know, so I've known about her. I'm, sh- I'm sure she's known about me. So I think we're both really familiar with each other and how we both evolved, you know, and like our styles and stuff. Um, so it's going to be a cool fight. You know, I feel like a lot of us like young and up and coming fighters, like, uh, we just, we ha- we're different, you know, um, we just, I don't know what it is, like, but we're just different. So uh, we're both really game. We're both really tough. We have, like, kind of an attitude when we fight. Uh, <laughs> so I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be great, like, a great, stop it, like, a great showcase for, uh, you know, for, like, the up-and-coming young women of MMA. Okay. Do you, for each of your fights, mm-hmm. do you have a different process, or is it, like, a... Um, I mean, you know, every wise? opponent's different, you know, so uh, every opponent has, like, different weaknesses and different strengths so of course you have to pay attention to that personally i don't watch any of my opponent's footage uh i used to and it just like i, I just don't, don't like to do it anymore especially like highlight videos it's like why am i gonna watch like all the oh, amazing good. moments yeah, of yeah. it's like dude uh when i used to watch i used to sit down and like uh you know be be watching all 15 minutes picking everything apart but now i just leave that to my coaches you know um you know, I just kind of go in and train, and they'll be like, hey, do this because she does that. And I'm like, all right, yes, sir. Like, that's, I'll trust you to do that. Like, you know what you're talking about. Um, so, yeah, uh, the game plan uh, the game plan never really changes, if I'm being honest. Like, I mean, unless it's, like, someone who's, like, can't, isn't, like, not a good grappler. And I'm like, okay, I got to grapple them. Or, like, is a really good grappler. Okay, let's strike them. But I feel like in the UFC, like, everyone's well-rounded. You know what I mean? Definitely. So... I mean, if the fight's just going to go where it's going to go, and you just have to be comfortable wherever it goes. So 
that's the plan very true very true yeah just adjusting even in the moment exactly like between rounds mm -hmm. like in the middle of a round like you just have to be able to mm -hmm. be like okay well that wasn't working so we gotta switch it up you know so. even someone having a little cut yeah right? <laughs> I've been cut a couple she a times. She has a picture of her having. It's it's <laughs> two out of three of them have been headbutts, oh, like shit. just clashing of heads, you know. Uh -huh. So, but I believe not you. I believe it's not fun getting cut. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, you're getting stitched up in the back, it's awful. Definitely. Obviously, you always want to take um, your fight one at a time. You know? Yeah, and not really worry about the future. But I have heard other interviews is that you want to be the person that gets yeah. the call whether it yeah be i mean a I, week two yeah. weeks like yeah how, how many fights obviously with everything going on right now and yeah restrictions if it wasn't restricted how many fights would you have expected in yeah. comparison to how many you might be coming up to this year you know i don't know um i love fighting and i love taking short notice fights my last two fights have been the only two fights where I actually had like an eight to ten week camp. Uh, before that, I always fought on like three weeks notice and two weeks notice. My UC debut was on six days notice. You know what I mean? So for me, it's kind of like, um, it's kind of, I don't know. I don't really have a number that I want to reach, but I just, I love taking opportunities, you know? Um, you know, you have people like Cowboy Cerrone and like, you know, Justin Gaethje, who they're just game. They don't care. It's like, no matter who you are, where you are, when, like, I'm there and I'm ready to fight. And that's the fighter I want to be known as, you know. Of course, I want to get that belt and that's the, the end game. But I want to test myself, you know. Okay. I want to test myself against the best. Like, and the thing is, is you should be confident enough in, like, your ability and your training to take a fight on, you know, six days notice against anyone. Yeah. You know, and if you go in there and you lose, you get your ass kicked. Or if it's a close, like... So that's just it is what it is like now you know what you need to work on like Definitely. you know um that's just the name of the game and i just want to be as real and authentic as a fighter as i can and i feel like that anytime anywhere any place kind of attitude i mean i did just get a manager though because um i'm super reckless with my <laughs> career you know like if the ufc was like hey do you want to fight tomorrow for free against like someone really good i'd be like yeah like i'm just like, I'm just reckless like that. And I know that's a good attitude to have, but I think I uh, I kind of run myself into, into like, not bad situations, but, like, um, you know, managers, they know the name of the game. You know what I mean? And I was really picky, and it took me a long time, and I finally found someone who I think I trust. So um, when it comes to, like, money negotiations and fight negotiations and getting the right fights, you know what I mean? Like, I don't have those uh those connections you know what i mean but mm -hmm. managers do yeah. so i'm finally putting you know like my career in, in the hands of someone so uh, i'm a little nervous but <laughs> i think it'll be good for me in the long run hey nothing wrong with that like yeah. i said it's just it's the trust Definitely exactly yeah trust. yeah um i think everyone would want to know i want to know yeah and obviously you have to get to that, but yeah. you never know. One day it'd be like you had a killer match and everyone yeah. can say this girl deserves a title yeah. title butte. Yeah. When can when do you think yeah. you can expect that from you getting that opportunity? See, I know it's all about opportunities. Yeah, but it is. You did say it is a strong strawweight division. It is, you know, and uh I don't I honestly don't know because like uh I think now that I have a manager, that road will be, you know, better and I'll get better fights. Because, like, honestly, right now, like, uh, that's this isn't going to be my third UFC fight and my third UFC debuter. Um, so, I'm kind of, like, I feel like I should have got a little bit of a step up. But uh, I, didn't have a I didn't have a manager at the time and I just wanted to fight. And, like, I don't want to be that fighter that complains and shit. So, I was like, I mean, I'll take it. Like, I'm not going to turn down a fight, you know. So, um I don't know when that title shot's coming. Um, I feel like, I'm, I mean, it's for sure a few fights away. You know what I mean? But you never know. Like, you know, those last minute fights, sometimes, like, they have someone, you know, say I win this, say I knock her out or I finish her in a spectacular yeah. fashion. Like, they exactly. could give me a big fight and then I'm one or two fights away. Like, it literally mm -hmm. could be 10 fights from now. It could be two fights from now. Like, exactly. you really never know, you know. Uh, Just where it's gonna go you just know waiting for the opportunity yeah exactly that's why i just like taking any opportunity i can definitely as a 
female fighter. Yeah. Obviously, you know, parents can be like, oh my God, my, my little princess, you know, yeah, and stuff yeah. like that. What advice can you give maybe a little girl that wants to, or even someone in, you know, in junior high, high school that yeah. wants to pursue a career like this? Yeah. I mean, I would just say own it. Like, because I know for me, like, I played softball super competitively from 9 to 16, and I thought that's what my passion was, you know? But uh, when something is genuinely your passion, you're going to know. You know what I mean? Like, like for me, like, like I said, I knew I wanted to be the UFC champion before I even stepped <laughs> in the gym, you know? And uh, I just knew. Like, before I even picked up a glove, stepped on a mat, I just knew. And uh, no one was going to tell me otherwise, you know? So for me, like, I would just say own it. Like, I mean, I'm about it. I, I don't know. I dropped out of high school. To, to fully train full time when I was 16 sure. um and I was like AP honor student like I was gonna go to Harvard to play softball like um I was like super good with school and uh within like a month of training all my grades went to shit because all I could think about was was training and then they had all the fighters had practice at 11 so I was like man I'm missing like the fighters practice you know so I was like, my grades are slipping, so there goes Harvard, you know what I mean? <laughs> and so um, so my passion for fighting kind of literally took over everything in my life. I c- couldn't focus on anything but fighting. So I would say, if it's your passion and you know it's your passion, like, whether it's that, whether it's, like, art. I mean, obviously, you have to make smart decisions and be able to support yourself, but there's a fine line when you're trying to chase your dream and, like, be something, like, stand out, you know Definitely. what I mean? I feel like too many people uh you know go with that mold and their parents kind of pressure them into that mold of like go to college get a degree like be in debt and stay in the <laughs> office job your whole life right. you know like i that i oh, couldn't man. i can't do that <laughs> i can't i'm so crazy right i, I hear you <laughs> if you if you weren't fighting yeah what would you be doing right uh now? well i wanted to study criminal psychology okay. um I love, like, you know, the show Criminal Minds and, like, CSI's Law and Order. Like, I wanted to do that. Like, that's what I wanted to be. Um, And, like, I still think that stuff's so cool. Like, say criminals, like, why they do what they do. Like, I want to know that. Like, how? that's, to me, like, I don't know. It's always been fascinating. (laughs) And then to know that and then to be able to, like, like, kind of stop it or, like, fight against it. I thought that was super cool. So, criminal psychology was what I was going to major in if I had, like, went to college. Yeah. yeah, I went to I went to school for criminal justice. So, really? Yeah, nice. so that's why yeah. now I'm like it's so that. so it's like fascinating. It is, yeah. especially like just the law aspect. When yeah, it goes into yeah. It. The, the psychological part. It's yeah. just like you always ask the why. Like, yeah, why did you yeah. do this again? <laughs> I mean, I'm kind of happy I, I yeah. didn't go that route because I kind of engulf myself in things, and I feel like I might have just drove myself like myself crazy. Mm-hmm. I say that <laughs> as if I'm not driving myself crazy right? with fighting. <laughs> I'm like, well, she's oh a fighter, goodness. right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you kind of went off. You just you never have a day of just relaxing. But yeah. What do you like to do on just you know your downtime or um, what is a passion that you have? I love painting. You know, I will admit that during fight camps, like it's hard because painting, like it doesn't take like obviously it's not physical, but it does take a lot of like mental toll on me because like I'm kind of just expressing, you know. So, uh, it sucks because I don't really paint as much during fight camp, um, but I love painting. Other than that, I'm, I'm a homebody, so I love just hanging out with family and friends. I'm not, like, a partier. Um, I have, a, like, a tight-knit group, you know, and I kind of just stick to that, and I no, just kind of try to, to stay low-key and chill out. <laughs> <laughs> not do much. No, I get punched <laughs> in the face all the time, so the last thing I want to do is go party, you know? <laughs> oh, that's so funny. <laughs> um... I was going to say, what do you think, and I always want to ask a fighter, what do you think with all these, like, and I say this with this whole, like, and I'm going to bring this up because mm-hmm. they're influencers. What do you think about this whole, like, Jake Paul and all these, what do you think that's brought to the, uh, to the business and the industry? I mean, at the end of the day, I don't care, like, if I'm being honest, but uh, I do think it's, like, kind of a joke and a mockery especially like ben Askren versus i don't know which one is it jake or Rogan? i don't yeah, even know one of the two one of the two either way it's like what like why are we doing this like 
I don't know. To me, it's crazy how, like, YouTubers can make more money, like, fighting than fighters can, you know? And it's, like, and that's just how it is. And, like, that's why at the end of the day, I don't care because, like, it is what it is. And nothing I think or you think is going to change exactly. what's going to happen. Exactly. You know? So, like, it is what it is. And I'm just doing me. But, um, but yeah, I don't know. I do think it's, like, I do think it's kind of a joke, you know? Like, I don't, I will not watch it. Like, no, I don't, I don't have any interest in watching it. It's not like I'm, like watching it to boycott it i just don't want to watch it like uh you know i honestly think ben Askren might get knocked out which is super sad for mma because like it's gonna make mma look so bad but you know it is what it is and uh you know they're doing what they're doing to make money uh the only thing I don't like about it is how they think they're fighters because, yeah. like, it's one thing to fight is one thing, but to be a fighter is it's another, different. you know? Yeah. Um, you know, like, my days are nonstop and my body goes through hell and my mind goes through hell and, like, you know, I literally today, I, <laughs> so the UFC, they have nutritionists that give us, like, supplements and vitamins to, like, help our body through camp. Mm -hmm. So I just listen to my nutritionist, I take all my stuff and I try to set out my day and my night, you know? And with the night ones, I take, like, two melatonin, and then they have, like, PM vitamins that, like, help you sleep. This morning, I've been so, like, this week in this camp, everything is so chaotic for me during camp that, like, literally today, I took my nighttime vitamins <laughs> right when I woke up. So, like, for me, like, I put my body and mind through so much that I do stupid shit like that. But then this guy can make a couple YouTube videos mm -hmm. and then go get paid a million dollars. You know what I mean? And it's just uh, like, I get you. what the fuck? Right? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, the what? fuck do I sign up for exactly. that shit? Exactly. <laughs> like, what? where did I go wrong? But right? it's okay because, like, I would rather be, like, an authentic fighter than, exactly. than be kind of a joke. I think as long as you're dollars. doing what you love. Exactly. And you're, and you're doing it the yeah. way you want it and exactly. you think the right way is. Like, yeah. All else doesn't matter. I agree 100%. That's, that's what I think. So we're almost going to wrap up, but what is next for Miss Hansen? You know, uh, I don't do anything besides fight. So <laughs> this fight on March 20th is what's next, and I'm not looking past that. I'm not looking before that. You know, right now I'm kind of just in the mind frame of head down and work, you know, whether that work is promoting sponsors or whether that work is doing interviews, whether that work is you know, taking a rest day, whether that work is training, uh, I'm, everything I do is pointed towards March 20th for the next seven to eight weeks, Definitely. so that's the only thing that's next that I can even think of, like, everything revolves around that, so. Definitely, yeah. I agree. Well, I always like to ask a few little questions that yeah. are out of the, not ordinary, but just random. Little fun ones. The right, little fun ones. Yeah. Um, when you're not on that strict diet yeah. what do you like to eat what's your favorite uh snacks and you know i'm a big mac and cheese person mm -hmm. i don't know i i'm part <laughs> italian so i grew up with a lot of italian food so i'm big on like just pastas you okay. know which is dangerous so, when you're trying to watch your weight. so um that's why like during camps i'm like i want to cry because like i love like pastas and like just stuff like that i'm, a, I'm like but for me, like, my all-time favorite food is for sure, like, street tacos. Like, I could eat street tacos for every meal for the rest of my life. Either that or sushi. Those are my two favorite. Um, but, like, right now during camp, I'm just kind of craving, like, like, mac like carbs. Have you, you ever know? had a, have you had a birria taco yet? What is that? So, have you seen the, they're, like, the new, it has, like, cheese with, like, the birria meat. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, you dip it into a consumer. I have. I haven't okay. tried them, though. But you've heard of it, right? But I've heard of it, yes. After, that's a to. must. Once yeah. you win, yeah. on March 20th, that's your go-to. Yes. I am, like, <laughs> a sucker for street tacos. I can't, I don't do the hard shell tacos. Like, I don't, it just doesn't seem right to me. I don't know. Right. It's disrespectful. But, yeah. So, for me, street tacos, sushi. Um, but during camp, like I said, like, Mac and cheese, or like post, like weigh ins, like after I weigh in and I want to carb up, like mac and cheese is where I go. Yeah. Okay, okay. Well, you did say obviously your favorite shows, but what are some yeah. of your favorite movies that um, you know, you like know maybe I mean, I don't watch to... a couple times? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I uh, I don't have, I don't really watch many things, but uh, I mean, uh, as far as like movie series or like series go, like on Netflix and stuff, like. I just like light things, you know, like, uh, you know, like they show All American, like I like that show, okay. and like, 
uh, Haunting of the Hill House. Like, yeah. I like that show. It was really scary, but I like that show. Uh, but as far as movies, like, either action or comedy for me, like, um, like Step Brothers, I could watch that movie <laughs> on a repeat, maybe for the rest of my life, you know? Uh, a local girl. Um, so Orange either, County like, himself. Yeah, so either, like, action movies or, you know, comedies. You can never go wrong with Will Ferrell or even, like, uh, you know, some Jim Carrey movies are pretty good. Um, but I try to keep it light when I'm watching stuff. Yeah, <laughs> My head and goes then, through too much. <laughs> and then tell us about your little pup, Rico. Um, well, this is Rico. He's, like, three and a half months old. He's actually a super calm dog. He's a little antsy right now. I don't know why. But usually he just knocks out doing these kind of things. Uh, but he's my little roll dog. He goes everywhere with me. Um, I take him to training and I have a little bed. I have to tie him to like a dumbbell, like just in case, you know. Uh, but most of the time he's just laying in his bed, chilling, going from session to session with me. He loves all my training partners, all my coaches. So uh, he's take tired. him to the beach. He's always tired. He's always sleeping. Um but yeah, he goes everywhere with me, and I think he loves it, so um, he's he's super cool. It's nice, because like, when I moved out on my own, I went from living with like my grandparents and my sisters to like just by myself, and like, it's cool, because like, I love living by myself, you know, and you can have people over when you want, but there comes a point where like you can only have so many people over before you're like, okay, go home. Like, right. <laughs> I need like alone time, but I it's kind of cool, because now I have this little guy with me all the time, and he's like always excited, like no matter where we're going, he's like just yeah. excited to go, no, you know, so... It's awesome. I hear you. I hear you. Uh, before we close up, anything you want to tell the viewers or just finish it up and just let them know? Uh, no. Just tune in on March 20th. It's going to be fun. I think it'll be on ESPN. Um, I'm not sure they haven't like finalized the card or finalized everything yet because I know they've been like airing it on ABC lately. Uh, they'll do ESPN, ESPN Plus, but it should be on ESPN, so... There you go. I'm looking forward to it. March 20th. Make sure y'all tune in and support. Like I said, she doesn't. If you guys don't, she won't kick your butt. <laughs> <laughs> but as always, thank you for stopping by. No, thank you for having and, me. Uh, it's definitely a pleasure. Uh, obviously, I'm sure you're tired. And yeah, you just want to rest up. So. Like I, we mentioned earlier, she just got here from her training. and I was actually late. <laughs> <laughs> but again... Thank you for coming. And no, like of course. Thank you for having me. No, as always. I wish Rico was a little calmer. He's like trying right. to eat the microphone. <laughs> He's like, what about me? I don't ask me any questions. Right. <laughs> right. And actually, one last thing. Where yeah. can we... If Do you train people? Do you have like sessions? Um, do I don't right now. Um, and honestly, during camp, I don't, I don't know if I could take on any. But like outside <laughs> of camp, like... Uh, you know, I love working with people. I love giving privates. Um, I love coaching people. One of my friends, she's fighting um, March 6th, I believe, and I'm going to Tennessee with her to, to corner her in one of her fights. So I love coaching. Um, you know, I love, like, training people. During camp, it's just hard because I'm just training so much, and in between, I'm doing stuff like this and, like, you know what I mean, like, doing social media stuff. So, uh, but after my fight, yeah, I... To, I love to, to train people. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. So, we always do giveaways. And as always, no one ever claims these giveaways. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever seen... I always give giveaways at the end, but no one ever claims them. Really? Literally. The only time is when I give away vans. Vans? And people well, claim them. Sense. yeah. Right? Um, but... I'm actually going to get one made for you. Oh, sweet. Your last name on the back. That would be so, so sweet. Yeah. That would be then, awesome. I'm going to put me that tv that'd be awesome so these are the hoodies that i'm gonna hopefully be making down um i'm gonna be giving away this hoodie not this one specifically but <laughs> a hoodie <laughs> uh we're gonna get i'm gonna I'm get a watched. few months right <laughs> and someone commented earlier i asked on my on my instagram what should i give out if you're over the age of 21 i will be giving away a bottle of alcohol of your choice Dang. so let me know <laughs> Uh, make sure you guys just, I don't know, put like a little beer emoji or alcohol emoji on the comments, the posts, or anything. And that's that. Like I said, once again, and thank you. No, thank you. And we'll catch you guys next time. Peace. <laughs>